Good morning, Makle. Welcome to our grammar class. And uh, hope you all are fine. And Makle, in the last class, we were doing finite and non-finite verbs. And we discussed finite verbs. And what do you mean by finite verb? I hope you remember. Yes, finite verb means verbs that changes according to the tenses, person, and number of the subject of the sentence. And I explain you the finite verb with some examples. Hope you people remember that. So, Makla, today we'll do the non-finite verb. What do you mean by non-finite verb? But before going to the definition, please, uh, I want you to see to these examples. Here I wrote two examples for you. He enjoys swimming. They enjoy swimming. Okay? Now, can you say me the verbs over here? In the first sentence, which are the verbs? Yes, we have two verbs. One is enjoys and the other is swimming. Right? In the second also, we have enjoy and the other one we have swimming. Okay, now can you find there is something here in this sentence. See, he enjoys and they enjoy. Now, enjoy in the last, if you remember uh, the last class, you will uh, know that enjoy or enjoy, it has changed according to the person. Here we have third person singular. And in the second example, we have third person plural. Okay. So, if uh, because it, it is singular over here, we used singular verb. Here it is plural over here, we use plural verb. Now, this verb changed according to the subject of the sentence. E sentence in the subject in the mainly depended on that. It changed according to the subject. So, what kind of verb is that? Are the eight type verb? Last class we discussed this. Yes, when the verb changes according to the person or the according to the subject, then it becomes what kind of verb? Finite verb. Okay, now here enjoys and enjoy are finite verbs. Okay, now just see, in this sentence we have one more verb, right? He enjoys swimming. Swimming is also a verb, right? Other reaction word again. So it is also a verb. Now see in both these sentences. Both these sentences have the word swimming. But they are not changing as the finite verbs are changing. Finite verb change I have our change our Whether the subject is singular, here it is swimming. Whether the subject is plural, again it is swimming. There is no any change with those verbs. Okay? So these kind of verbs that do not change, therefore, are called non-finite verb. Okay? See here, e verb, swimming and the verb, it is not changing. Now, subject to either change in it. Whereas, enjoys, it's changed. Here it is enjoys, here it is enjoy. So, it is changing, it is called finite verb. Swimming, see, subject is different, but in both the cases, the verb is the same. So, they are called non-finite verb. So, now let's define non-finite verb. What is that? So, definition for definition for non-finite verbs means verbs that do not change verbs that do not change their form according to the tense number and person of the subject of the sentence. Are called non-finite verbs. Okay? That means our verb tense, our verb in the tense change our or 
person is the verb doesn't change according to the person or according to the number of the subject of the sentence i hope this part is very clear to you so we discuss now what do you mean by finite verb what do you mean by non finite verb finite verb changes according to the tense of the sentence okay or according to the person and number of the subject of the sentence whereas non finite verbs they do not change their form according to the tense person and number of the subject of the sentence hope this part is very clear to you okay now let's move to the next part that is non finite verbs are divided into three types let's see that now makle there are three kinds of non finite verbs okay non finite verbs are of three kinds what are they let's see infinitive gerund participle what's that infinitive gerund participle now let's discuss one by one of these types of non finite verb okay now makle let's see the first one that is infinitive okay so what do you mean by infinitive infinitive means verb with a two in front of it that means two plus base form of the verb base form of the verb means the plural form in it help uh, run all these are base form the plural form of the verb that is the base form so base form the code two animal but it should be in the front okay then it is an infinitive for example here to help to write to dance all these are verbs with a two in front of it it expresses an action appo infinity nu varna endana to verb in the front with two venam and it expresses an action it is naming an action okay a action or a name kodukuga to help see here now infinities are used in different situations for example it comes after verb he ran to help the man now here we have the verb ran so infinitive comes after verb verb in the order infinitive one and the other two help is a verb and in front of that we have two that a verb that is having two in front of it and it's expressing an action then it becomes what infinitive okay we are learning the three kinds of non finite verb from there we are now learning the first one that is infinitive so infinitive means verb that has two in front of it so infinitive can be formed after the verb so ran is a verb ran the ran kariyumba infinitive use edirikkum next one after object okay you all have learned the direct and indirect object and all so after object see here she told me to work hard which is the infinitive over here is there a two over there yes okay so we have we got a two and plus verb right two plus verb then what is that infinitive okay now after object see here she told me to work hard so our me becomes an object okay it is indirect object so she told me to work hard so indirect object ana so object is in fact it is wholly called object so object in session infinitive varikkana so she told me to work hard so that means infinitive after object then infinitive that is with the verb with to also can be used as subject in the sentence that is the subject ne pole use eyanad that means it is acting as uh, about whom we are talking see here to a uh, so we have here to plus verb a uh, means making mistake so to a uh, is human so even a normal infinitive to a uh, we are naming or it is acting as a subject in the sentence so the uh, uh, infinitive how these infinitives can be used next we'll be learning gerund what do you mean by gerund see here in gerund we have 
the base form of the verb plus again. Okay, base form of the verb again, plural form of the verb plus again. Verb in the word again. Base form of the verb, plural verb in the word again. For example, walking. Walk is the verb and ing. Okay, verb plus ing. Here, swim plus ing. Verb plus ing. Okay. So, in Jaran, we have verb plus ing. That's the way Jaran's are formed. Now, Jaran's can act as subject in the sentence. It can also act as object in the sentence. Subject in the one, are a pity on the number Okay. In the sentence about whom we are talking, that is the subject. Okay. For example, walking is good for health. Walking. So here it has a verb plus ing. Verb plus ing one up and gerund. Okay. Now verb we said that verb gerund is acting as a, it can act as a subject. So subject verb it will be in the beginning of the sentence. So subject plus I, I mean sorry. So we have verb plus ing. And here, the gerund is acting as subject in the sentence. Traveling has increased in India. Okay. We got this word from the, from the word travel. Travel. Okay. Now, travel is a verb. And we added ing to it and formed the gerund. In the sentence, look, gerund, um, e ing form, it is acting as a subject. Traveling has increased in India. About whom we are talking? Subject to one of them, are you pretty parallel? So about whom we are talking? We are talking about traveling. India traveling has increased. So it's acting there and here acting as a subject. Okay? It's acting as a subject. Next one. Jaran can also act as an object. Object in the standard in general and acting. That means the verb plus ing, it can act as an object. See here. I don't like cheating. Object no marimum, number and the verb no do question to me. See here. I don't like what. What in the answer get number that becomes the object. I don't like what. I don't like cheating. Okay. So it becomes the object. Next one. I enjoy traveling. I enjoy what? Traveling. So it becomes object. Okay. So, with the verb, we are asking the question what and we got an answer, then it becomes the object. So, I don't like cheating, I enjoy traveling. So, here it comes at the end of the sentence and here it is an object. And the one, gerund is acting as an object. Okay? Gerund is acting as object in this sentence. Okay? So, it can, uh, gerunds can also act as an object. So, gerunds means verbs with ing form with it and it can act as a subject in the sentence. It can also act as an object in the sentence. Hope, Makla, this part is also very clear to you. Okay. So, Ipanamula, Randa Garingal Padichi, Inflitu and Gerund. Inflitu means verb in the friendly to Anna. Okay. And gerund means Verb with verb, you are adding ing to the verb. Okay, I hope it's clear to you. Next, we'll move to participle. So, what do you mean by participle? We know that there are two types of participle. That is present participle and past participle. Present participle and past participle. Before that, let me tell you that participle means they are verbs. These verbs are used as adjectives. Okay. For our verbs are and these verbs are used as adjectives. We know that verb is, verb means it's an action word. Okay. Adjectives means what? Describing word. Adjectives are describing word. Are describe the Noun. Noun describes the adjectives. Okay. Now here, verb. A walk, verb and a walk, it is used as an adjective. Now, how can verbs be used as adjectives? Verbs are one action, the other walk. Action words, how it becomes an adjective. Now, let's see here with example. So, now, 
We discuss that participle has two types, present participle and past participle. So now let's see with example. Present participle. Present participle end the number see in the base form of the verb plus ing. Okay? Base form of the verb. That means plural verb. The word ing add in. But what it become? Present participle. For example, he invented a talking robot. Now, since we are doing this participle and I said that there is base form of the verb plus ing, you will, people will get, yeah, here there is a verb and, and the word ing one, okay, then I present participle, okay. But kids, do you remember that adding ing to the base form of the verb, number where is the to I'm going to change it. So, how will you find that? How will you guess that? Whether it is this one or that one. Number gerundium. Base form of the verb plus ing and it. So, here also I said that we are using the base form of the verb plus ing. So, how can you find that? See here. Now, number everybody are again talking robot. Okay. Now, talk and a verb in the number ing and it. It becomes, here we said that it becomes present participle. And participle means it is verb are used, verbs are used as adjectives. Ile. Apo, e verb in a ing add in the form, either adjective root of the R describe chain robot. It is describing this noun. So, it is coming before a noun. Okay? Even a present participle, it is coming before a noun. Okay? Hope that part is very clear to you. So, here, it is acting as an Adjective, the verbs are acting as an adjective. So, it is called present participle. And here it is describing a noun. Okay. Our present participle in the base form of the verb plus ing. Next, let's see. Okay. Past participle. What is that? Verb in the word. Verb plus d or you can add ed or en or t. Okay. Verb in the word. E spellings add em verb. What do you get? Past participle. Okay. For example, just see here. They ate boiled eggs. Ile. Ibadi past participle le namal endana nokande or in the participle. Whether it is present participle or past participle. Namak noun there should be. See here. Describing word. Noun le describe chayan daya. So here also we had a noun. Here also we had a noun. Right? So noun the friendly lana. What okay? Boil is our verb and with the verb we added ed to e and we formed past participle and this past participle is coming in front of a noun. So it is describing friend of noun the friendly learner okay verb in the word ed we added and so it is called from the verb it is, has been changed to adjective so here this is Describing this noun, so it is called past participle. Next case, here, the next example, I sat on a broken chair. Okay, we again have noun. Ella past, I mean, ella participle of noun is there. Noun the friendly learner, present to past and participle with another. See here, from the word broke, broke ele verb. Broke verb in the word namala, en. Add in. Okay. So, verb in the word e and add in. Therefore, what it became? Past participle. And it is in front of a noun. Ile. Broken chair. Chair in the number e the rubum gurtu. Broken chair. Okay. So, it is acting as a past participle. Hope, Bangla, this part is very clear to you. Now, before uh, winding up, I would like to make you clear about the ing form. Miss Ivode, talking robot no varnapam. I told you how you people will guess whether it is gerundano, present participle. So let's make that clear. Now, Makla, let me make you clear with the ing form. That is base plus ing form. We I said that we are using that in the gerund and in the participle. So let's see. In the gerund case, we learned that the ing form, it acts in the 
and it, it acts as a subject and as an object. Let's see here. Walking is good for health. Okay. Here also we have base form of the verb plus ing. And here it is acting as subject. Okay. Starting one only here it is a subject. Walking is good for health. Okay. We are talking about walking. Walking is a subject. Subject not a sentence. Uh, that is called subject. So, we are talking about walking. So, walking is good for health. Verb plus ing. Okay. And here it is acting as a subject. And this is gerund. Gerund. Next example. I like walking. I like what? Walking. I said that in gerund it acts as a subject and it also acts as an object. So, I like what? Walking. So, here it becomes verb plus ing and object position it is. And here it is gerund. Okay. Upper than the gerund. Okay. One in the beginning and the other at the end. Next one. This is my walking stick. Okay. Here also we have verb plus ing. So, how can you make the difference? Here in the first case, here in the object I am on the verbalization. Okay. So, here it is again the gerund. And in the cases, this is my walking stick. In this case, I said in the participle. Participle now ing again. Namaku verb plus ing we have. And it is coming before a noun. See. Ibra onu adilla. But here noun and the stick is a noun and here Walking stick no variable. Our stick no describe it the number. So here verb is acting as an adjective. So even in the participle. Okay. And that too what kind of participle it is? Present participle. Okay. So hope my friend. This is very clear to you. So with this we have completed our uh, this lesson. Finite verb and non-finite verb. I hope it's very clear to you. So, until our next class, have a nice day. Thank you.